What's up, YouTube? This is Vince Anthony with Anthony Automation in Visalia, California. Today is going to be lesson number three, and I am going to cover timers, counters, one shots, moves, and uh, the timer and counter resets. What we're going to do is on this HMI here, we're going to show the total times the machine was started, the total time that it ran, the total time that it was stopped, and the total time that it was down. So that's going to require two counters and two timers, and we have a reset button down here to reset all data. So let's get started. <clears throat> I'm going to be building off of the program that I already had here. This was from lesson two with the latches, and we'll just we'll leave the latches. That's okay. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is, I guess, build, start building my counters and my timers. And how am I going to do a counter? So every time that this start button is pressed, I want to know. I want to know and I want to show it on my screen so that my, my supervisors can walk around and document all this data for lean manufacturing. And just, to, just so they know. And they can keep track of how many times it was started and stopped. Maintenance can keep track of downtime, etc. So, in order to add a counter, we are going to add a rung. So here is the rung. Now, you, since I have this one highlighted, I could just click on the rung and it'll put it there. But sometimes you don't want it there. So you can drag the rung anywhere you want. Again, with the green dots, that's where the rung is going to go. And we don't need that one right now. So, what are we going to do? Every time the push button started. We want to count one. So let's bring our push button over here. Right to the green dot. Now, as I said before in the first two lessons, when that bit is high, it's high throughout the whole program. So if we have another bit with the same name and it's a global tag, then it will be high when this one's high. And then anywhere else, you could have a million programs over here. And anywhere in those programs, it will be high. So every time I toggle this start button, I want to increment my counter by one. So where are my counters and timers? Now you can use the little shortcuts that I showed the last time, but we'll keep it simple here. Timers and counters. So a counter, the counter that we're going to be looking at, is a CTU. That's a count up. There's also a count down, and you're more than welcome to look into that uh, you know, at your own leisure. But we're going to use a count up. So we're going to drag our count up down here. And we're going to have to give our counter a name. Now, I always go by the same method of naming. And uh, my method is CTU, whatever. That way I know that's a counter when I look at it in the global tag uh, list here and under control tag. So I'm going to call this CTU starts. Or total, let's say total starts. Then... It still doesn't know what's going on. These E's mean that there's a problem on that rung. Now you can right click on here and say verify rung. And up here it'll tell you exactly what's wrong. And you can click on that and it'll tell me, hey, we don't know what this is. We're going to have to give this guy a name and put him in the global tag. So it's a base tag. It means it's not alias to anything. The type of data type is a counter. And it is a global tag. I want my whole program to be able to see this. So I'm going to say create that tag. And then I'm going to have to give it a preset value. Preset value is the value that you are going to set in there before the counter is done. See so these two bits over here. The CU is counting up, meaning the counter is active. And the DN is done, meaning it has reached your preset value. So if I set my preset value to 10, when this start button is pressed 10 times, that counter will be done. Every time the start button is pressed, during the time that this is high, the CU bit will be high. And you can use these, and we will probably use them. We're going to make this a little higher, though, because we're not, we're not ready for using the done bits yet. So there you go. That's really all that takes. And... When that start button is pressed, we are going to count one. 
There it is. One, two, three, etc. Well, none of this is in here yet. We're going to have to move uh, values from here to in here to get this to read what we want it to read. But we're not going to do that yet either. So what do we need? We need another counter. And that counter is going to count our stops. And we're going to do it the same way. I'm going to drag it along down here. We're going to take our stop bit and stick it down here. And just to make things easier, I'm going to copy and paste. Now, I don't want it to be the same instruction, obviously, but it saves me a little time. So we're going to call this one total stops. And again, we don't know what that is, total stops. What is that? We don't know. We're going to have to name it and get, so get in there, get in the program. And we're going to create total stops. Base tag, no alias, type is a counter, global tag, good to go. So now we have our total stops. Now every time the stop button is pressed, we're going to count up. Notice it's different; it's separate from this guy. They're two separate counters. So now those are our counters. Now let's add some timers. So again, we're going to add another rung, rung, and we're going to say the whole time that motor one is on. Again, we're going to use Miss Motor one here, but we're going to use an XIC. We're going to say the whole time motor one is on, we're going to we're going to activate a timer. So we're going to drag our XIC down here. We're going to drag the name to the XIC. Then we're going to go for a timer. T O N timer on. There's also T O F timer off and retentive timer on delay. And you're welcome to again look into those two. Uh, in the help section, it's very helpful, and I'll show you at the end of this lesson how to use that. And uh, we're going to go timer on. And again, I like the name. My I have to keep the naming convention T O N runtime. So we're going to have to name this guy and bring him into the program, and it's a base tag, no alias. Data type is a timer. And it's a global tag. And we're going to set the preset value here to whatever because we, we don't want it to be done. We just want to know how long it's been running for this particular timer. But you can use timers for all kinds of useful purposes. And now we're going to take the same thing. I'll show you a trick here. We're going to need another timer, but we're going to need another bit here too. So we can copy and paste. And if you know your shortcut keys, Control V, Control C, it makes it a little quicker. So we're going to change this guy to an XIO because now we're going to say when the motor is not running, you know, begin counting and timing, and we want to know how long the machine has been down. So we're going to call this downtime, and we're going to name it. Bring it into the program, base tag, no alias, data types of timer, it's a global tag. Okay. There we go. We have our starts, our start count, total start counters, total stop counters, uh, total run time, and total stop time. See, it, it counting right now because the motor's not running. If I start the motor, that guy went away. And this guy is counting. Stop the motor. That guy's counting. That guy went away. 